guys, it's me. Hey guys, it's me again, Chris, Chris Hez, however you want to call me. Don't matter, don't care. Anywho, I did say I was going to make videos on his YouTube channel, and that's what I'm going to do. So, without further ado, let's start the show. Now, before I start, this video is going to be for the people that are streaming or would like to stream and just don't know where to start, don't know what to do. It's not going to be like a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to stream. It's going to be more of a tips, tricks, you know, shit like that to make your stream better, more presentable so people will watch your shit because that's what we want, right? No one likes having a crappy stream, you know, no one likes that. Like, I don't want to go on stream and see some guy's stream all fucking pixelated. I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to lie. Unless if he's really entertaining, has a sexy voice, then yeah. But other than that, no. But yeah, it is going to be for people that would like to start streaming on Twitch for OBS users only. I don't use XSplit. I don't plan on it. Um, I don't know. Just never had a niche for XSplit. Never tried it. Not planning on it. But only for OBS. Remember, guys. OBS. Well, let's get started. So first thing you're going to need is OBS up and running. Open broadcaster software, if you don't know what that is. If you don't know what that is, I'm not really <laughs> sure why you're on my video, but hello. Anyways, you want to go on settings, and then settings again. And there you go. Now first thing you want to do in encoding, make sure you have X264 checked. I don't see why you wouldn't, because mine is blanked out, but if for some reason you can see these things, click X264. Next, you want to click Use CBR and then Max Bitrate. Now, this varies. It, it really varies. Depends on your internet. The internet that I have, I have Comcast. I don't exactly remember the type of Comcast internet I have, but I get somewhere around like 30, 34 down and then like, I don't know, 9 and 10 upload. What I usually stick with, I stick with 3K. Now you can change it however you like. It all depends on your internet. So let's say your internet's kind of shitty, like a little bit less than mine. Not too shitty. I would probably stick around 2K, maybe even 1500. It's all on you. I believe the, the limit right now on Twitch is 3500. I don't think you can go any further than that. I'm not sure. I have no idea. That's what I heard. But if you have good internet, shit like that, I would either stick at 3,000 or 3,500. Now you want to check, uncheck, use custom buffer size. Make sure you click enable CBR padding. And pretty much you're good to go. I mean, codec, you might want to do AAC and then 48, 128, and then stereo. Now in broadcast settings, this is pretty self explanatory. In order to get your stream key, you have to go on your dashboard in Twitch. You click the stream key tab on your dashboard in Twitch, and it'll give you your stream key. You copy paste that and you put it right here. And other than that, everything here you don't really need unless you're to be doing uh, local recordings. You click save the file, and then you'll be able to click the start recording button, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm not actually streaming, I'm just recording. Now, here's the big one video tab. This is what I was talking about. So, if you want to select your video card. And now you either want to click custom or monitor. In my opinion, in my opinion, go with custom. Or if you just want to go with your um, your default, your native resolution, go with monitor. It's just it's just gonna base it off what your resolution is on your monitor. But if you want to fiddle with that and you want to change it, if your you know your system's kind of slow like mine, mine is sixteen hundred nine hundred. That's what I run with. That's what I'm using right now. Resolution downscale. This is a big one if you don't have too good of a computer and you want to kind of, you know, make your PC run a little bit faster when you're streaming, no lag, stuff like that. So the lower you downscale, the worse the quality will get. But there's a positive. It'll um, increase your FPS. And we like that, don't we? So for me, I have 1280, 720, 125, 1.25 resolution downscale. So I stream at 1600, 900. And my resolution is at 1280, 720. Makes sense? But once again, it depends on your system. So if you have a good system, I don't know, you have like a fucking like an i5 or an i7 
like a, like a GT660, by all means, go none. Like, if you don't have the resolution downscale, don't do it. Because, just don't do it. <laughs> but if you really have to, you, you can. It's not that bad. But when you do resolution downscale, make sure you click the best detail filter. You're going to have three other ones. You might see somewhat of a difference. I didn't experiment much with these three. I just went with the best detail. FPS, once again, that is, you know, it's all based on your machine. I keep mine at 50. I run, as you can see, R7 240 series AMD. Maybe 40, 45. It, you know, somewhere around there is fine. And a big one right here. Make sure you disable arrow, especially if you don't have that good of a system and you're planning on using, uh, let's say, window capture or monitor capture. You want that disabled. Why? Well, you can try it. I'm not going to really demonstrate because, I don't know, the lag is fucking retarded. But, yeah, pretty much what I just said there. It's going to lag. Everything's going to be laggy. Your FPS is going to tremendously drop, and you don't want that. Audio, nothing much to fiddle with here. Just make sure you select your main microphone. You can see, uh, reinitialize if you like. It's a preference. Once again, you just choose what you have. Mic boost, no, nah, not really. Unless if you want to like boost your microphone, vol um, receive volume, by all means go for it, but you don't really have to. Advance, you really shouldn't be fiddling with anything in here. Unless if you really, really have to. Like you go on a forum and you post a thread and you have certain problems and they tell you to change it up here. You can do that, but if you have no idea what you're doing, don't touch anything here. But one thing that wouldn't be that big of a deal changing, if you, if you can change it, is the X264 CPU preset. Now, if you have a slow PC like mine, you would want to go as up as possible. So, ultra fast is going to be, I don't know how this honestly works, it just like, it somehow has something to do with your um, resolution, the way everything looks, you know, graphic wise. So the lower you go, like slower, let's say, it would be good. It would be for good machines, for good systems. As you can see, changing the 264 can have severe ne negative effects on your stream quality and CPU usage. So the lower you go, the more strain you're going to be putting on your CPU. Remember that, guys. Um, right here on custom X264, don't worry about that. This just make it unchecked. You don't need anything in there. Microphone noise gate. Now, one of the biggest issues that streamers run into and they have no idea how to fix is background noise. Like static, like, all right, let's say I'm not talking. Look, I'm gonna be silent for five seconds. Generally, you would hear a buzzing sound. Like, you just would, without the noise gate. Now, let me explain what the noise gate does. Pretty much, you choose a thres threshold close and open so let's say let's stay quiet bar sits right there so you want that a little bit above it so pretty much whenever I talk it only gets the sound when I talk but when I don't talk it doesn't get anything from the background unless if it's loud loud enough above the threshold so let's say I tap on my desk you guys are gonna hear that see I'm gonna stay quiet and I'm gonna tap watch see that it went above it I can get rid of that tapping if I put the threshold a little bit up. Both of these up. It, they're pretty much the same. It's really useful. Um, it may be confusing at first to some people, but it's really useful and you'll end up loving it. And you won't be able to live without it. Attack time, hold time, it's pretty much just um, times where um, I honestly don't know 100% for sure. I was just like exper experimenting with it. Whatever works best. I just put in um, not random numbers. I just put in a random number at first and saw what it did, and then I increased it, decreased it. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure how to explain the attack time, hold time, release time. You guys will have to fiddle that with yourselves. But these are my settings. You can use them. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. But once again, it depends on you know your phone. But it's gonna be pretty much around what I have right here. Maybe like. This is going to be 180, and this is going to be like 20 or 30 or 140 or 30. You experiment with it. Now, the second topic I'm going to be getting into in this video, dual monitors. Ask yourself a question. Would you rather stream with one monitor, one monitor, or two? Two monitors. Not one. Two. Unless if you don't want to read chat, be a dick, you know, by all means. Dual monitors really does help. I'm going to show you guys my setup real quick. I don't really do this much, but... Be kind of hard. Okay, as you can see, that's my first monitor, okay? That's a Samsung. And that's my other monitor. Usually I would have chat up like right here. 
and my follower notification green green thing would be here and OBS would be here and all gameplay would be right here so it fits perfectly like it just makes sense and it's so much better like you try to go back to one monitor and after using dual monitors for such a long time you're just not gonna do it you're gonna be like fuck this I'm getting another monitor <laughs> You just you just don't want to get yourself into that. You need two monitors. Trust me. Don't stream if you only have one monitor. Don't. If you don't want to read chat, okay, fine. But don't expect anyone to come in. Got it. Got it. Now another thing I want to touch is window capture, game capture, or monitor capture. What should I use and why? First of all, game capture will always always be the best way of capturing your games. Just, just trust me with this one. Trust me. It's always going to be less lag. It's going to be perfect. And if you don't know that yet, all you got to do is select the game that you're playing, refresh it a few times. It might bug a little bit. Click, what, let's say this is World of Warcraft, right? Refresh, refresh, and it will click OK, and it should pop up. You know, resize it however the fuck you want it. Window capture, you, I mean, a lot of big streamers, they do use window capture, but that is because, you know, A, they have good systems and their PCs can run it like nothing. Mine, on the other hand, can't do that. Like, I cannot run a game window capture. Maybe some games, but not most of them. I always use game capture. Unless if I'm uh, showing you guys something on stream, I would use monitor capture. But I never, ever use window capture. Unless if I'm putting up, like, a timer or something like that. Other than that, I don't use window capture. I just don't fuck with it. Just don't. If you have problems with FPS, stay away from window capture. Go to game capture and stay there. <laughs> Set up a key binding. This is another um, tip I'm going to give you guys. You want to set up a key binding? Good way to uh, caption your games without going into OBS and checking shit and doing this. You want to go to game capture, use hotkey, set whatever hotkey you would like. Mine is usually F9. So you click OK, blah, blah, blah. Now let's say um, this is your game, right? I'm clicking the game, like inside, make sure you have it windowed and everything. You click the game and then you click F9. As soon as you click F9, your screen is going to be filled with the game. It's just a quick way of doing it. Just make sure your game capture is checked in sources. Now, before I end this video, I'm just going to add a few points, little tips when it comes to interaction with your stream. I'm not going to go deep into it because I can just keep going, going on and on and on and on. The way I had people stay in my stream, following me and watching me, is interaction. When someone says something, you better fucking make sure you say something back to them. Like if they say hi, they're going to say hi, hello Killick, or you know, hello Tuke, or hello Dewey. Or if they ask you a question, you fucking answer that question, man. If you don't answer that, don't blame me when they leave five seconds later, all right? Now, you need to interact. If there's no interaction, you don't have a stream. That's what streaming is. It's full out interaction. And you know what? That's just how it is. And that's all I'm going to say at the end of the video is interaction. Interact with your fucking viewers. Make sure you have a webcam. doesn't have to be necessarily good good. As long as it's, you know, you can see it's crisp. It's not that bad. Great. Use that. Put that crap on the bottom left, right corner. Minimize it a little bit. Not minimize it. Resize it. Have a microphone, a, an okay microphone. I'm using AX720 Tritons at the moment. I used Z1 Turtle Beaches, I believe. Those were good. I broke it. I broke them. I sat on them. That story. I might be making more videos when it comes to like helping out Twitch streamers, stuff like that. But as of now, I don't think I'm going to be doing it anymore for a little bit. I'm going to be focusing on other videos. I just wanted to make a video like this because I just had it in my mind. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. And if I don't do it today, I'm probably going to lose the idea or something like that. I don't know. Something's going to happen. But I hope this video was very educational. To you guys, to you new Twitch streamers or existing Twitch streamers that just needed help. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant day. See ya.